Hi, my name is Royce Ard. I'm the owner of My Amazing Maid, and I also host a Facebook group called The High Tech House Cleaner, where we talk about how software, software automations, technology, and systems can help you run your business and be smarter, run easier, and be more profitable. Today, we're going to talk about how those types of systems and technology have helped us survive the pandemic thus far. So thank you for joining me at Maid Summit 2020, and let's dig in and get started. So the pandemic, who would have ever thought that we'd be dealing with that? We did think though that we would like to spend less time in the office and more time doing the things that we enjoy doing outside of work. And so we had already created a lot of systems and we were using the right kind of software to be ready for something like this when it happened. Now, let's just start from the beginning. The pandemic created a lot of unique challenges in our business, and I'm sure it did for you too. We're in a market that never shut down, so we were able to continue cleaning all the way through, but that didn't mean that we didn't stop doing things, you know, sort of business as usual. So we went from working in an office environment to working at home, and it happened over a weekend. Now, the consultants will tell you that if you want to start working from home more and, and working from work less, that you need to sort of take time and get your employees used to that. Well, that didn't happen, right? Because on March the 13th, sort of our world changed. So that was one of the biggest challenges that we faced. And fortunately, because we were already going in the way of wanting to be able to have more free time, we had the systems and we had the software that we could use to make that move easier on us and on our employees. One of the biggest challenges that we had from an employee standpoint was we had immediate needs for additional training. And I wanna talk about how we use software to roll that training out and also to make sure that they were doing the training and that they grasped the concepts. In-person visits to customers' homes stopped other than cleaning, okay? So now we were already in a position where we did not do um, in-person estimates. So I'll talk about some of the things that we do there to make it easier to run your business without having to go to the customer's home. And last, customer employee and employee trust is critical to have. So during this time, you, it's not something that you can build overnight. So that's something that you have to be doing from now and get it started so that when you do have an emergency that you're able to rely upon your, your, this trust that you've built up to help run your business and help it run smoothly. So let's talk about hiring and training, okay? So just like most people, um, the day that everything became big news about uh, the pandemic and the coronavirus, we had several customers that just you know stopped their services, or I like to say they paused their services. Matter of fact, our business went down by 40%. Now, the good news is it's back pretty much to normal. We're still a little bit shy of where we were before the pandemic, but we're getting closer every day. So one of the things that we did immediately, just like a lot of folks, is that we sort of right-sized our organization. We had to let a few people go and they were on unemployment for a little while. And then guess what? Customers started coming back and we needed to bring them back. And they said, nope, gonna stay on unemployment for a while. So we had to have a system to help us hire and train our employees online. And I'm just gonna talk briefly about this, but if you go to my Facebook group, The High Tech House Cleaner, I'll have a video really showing you how all of this works. There's about you know, three or four different components to it. Number one is we have a system that helps us screen our candidates before we ever talk to them. And the way that that works is they fill out an online questionnaire, and this questionnaire has some questions that um, or what I would call screening questions. If you answer a question and say you don't have a vehicle, then there's really no need for us to interview you any further because you aren't going to be qualified for the job. So that's what that system allows us to do. It allows us to get this whole you know, large number of candidates down to a manageable number. The next thing that we did is we had a system on how we do interviews. Now, if you've never done phone and video interviews before, let me tell you, it's gonna be the way of the future, not just during the pandemic, but going forward, because it's just so much more convenient for you and for the candidate. 
And that's what all the reading today says is that this new method of doing interviews is here to stay. So what we do, our, our screening tool allows um, our qualified candidates to go ahead and schedule a phone interview so that we know they're going to be interested. And we do that phone interview and everything goes well, then we schedule a video interview. Now we had never done these before, so it was sort of new to us. Um, and we were able to use uh, Facebook Messenger. Uh, we've been able to use Zoom. We've been able to use uh, you know, iPhone technology to do these interviews and do them well. So those have gone really well, but we have a system in place now on the three ways that we're going to screen. Our screening tool, our phone interview, and our video interview. So once all of that goes well, then we're able to do online training. And this exists, this consists of our orientation and also our initial training, uh, which teaches our, our new employees how to clean a bathroom. Okay, now a couple of things that happened here that one we didn't even know would happen, but it makes sense, right? This has turned out to be another great screening tool because we give them a time frame to complete the training. And if they haven't completed the training by the time it's supposed to be their start date, then of course they can't start. So a lot of people, maybe not a lot of people, but some people have actually screened themselves out at this point because they realized this was not a job that they, that they were cut out for or that they wanted to do. Now we pay them while they're doing the, the, um, the online training, um, just number one, just to be super ethical about it, and um, number two, so they feel good about uh, you know, doing the training and, um, and getting it completed on time. We start off on the right foot that way. So the tool that we're using for this is called Trainual, T-R-A-I-N-U-A-L, okay? And it's a very easy tool to use, um, and it allows you to put your videos up on, online, um, but there's a lot of other ways that you can do this, uh, whether you create you know, your own type of system to do this, but I would suggest having some way to do your initial training now online. It really makes a lot of sense. We also use another piece of software called Bamboo HR that we've used for a long time, and it's how we track our candidates. Now, a lot of these software tools you think, well, man, they're gonna be super expensive, but Bamboo HR is actually priced by the number of employees that you have. So if you're a small company, it's not gonna be very expensive. But we're able to uh, send all of the paperwork that they need to fill out, so their uh, tax forms as well as, um, you know, confidentiality agreements, things like that, they can sign on, online, and we can see that this has been completed. So this combination of um, a screening system, an online training system, and a way to do e-paperwork have allowed us to efficiently hire and train people before they even come to the office on day one. Now, the next thing is we had to have an online training system for ongoing training because one of the first things that we had to do was to train our existing employees on how to clean um, for the coronavirus, so what our new protocol would be. And again, we used Trainio for that, and it has turned out to just be a great tool because not only can we see that they have completed the training, but we can also have uh, tests online to make sure that they have grasped all the concepts um, around that training. So those have been really good tools for us. And again, uh, on my Facebook group, I'll be glad to, to tell you more about um, all the details of how that works. A pricing system. So this is the next piece that you have to have if you're going to run your business from afar or in this particular case from our home and run it so that you don't really skip a beat. First of all, I'd like to talk about in-person estimates because some people just refuse to do it because of whatever reason, you know, you feel like you want to have that relationship with a customer. And I will tell you, especially now, more people are looking for what I call the Amazon experience. They want to be able to get a price online, buy their service, schedule it, and just have you show up. And that's what our company's been trying to strive for to do. And, we, and now most of our estimates are actually done online and they are able to schedule their appointments. But even if you can't do that, you need to be able to give an estimate on, over the phone, and you need to um, create a system so that you get the same quote every time, so that it's always accurate. And you can do this with spreadsheets. Um, there are uh, apps and tools out there that you can use. 
we actually use a, a tool that's on our website that we uh, can, can do in the office as well, or in this case, we're at home, and, uh, and do those over the phone so all the estimates look alike. Now, it's, if you haven't been doing uh, uh, over the phone estimates, it can be scary because you're worried about not charging enough. Well, let me tell you, there's, you've got a couple things that can help you there. Number one is you can re reverse engineer your current customers. So what I mean by that is take a customer that you know um, that you're cleaning it in the right amount of time, that um, you're happy with the price that you're getting for that customer, and you can reverse engineer that and figure out what your prices should be. Now, I recommend a pricing system like this is to keep it simple. It's going to be a lot more effective if you do. Sure, there's going to be some times it's not going to quite be right, but there's going to be other times where you make a little bit extra money on it. And for that, I use two critical numbers. And one of those is the square footage of the home. Now, one of the reasons I like to use square footage is because you can access their square footage if the customer doesn't know it. Or a lot of times they just aren't, you know, they aren't sure about what the square footage is. You can use tools in the United States like Zillow.com or Realtor.com or, or the tax records, and you can get those numbers very quickly so that you can put them into your model and determine what, what the price should be. The next number that you're going to need is you're going to need to understand how many square feet you can clean per hour. Okay. Now for us, that number is somewhere around 700 square feet per hour per cleaner. And that's on just a regular maintenance clean. So the last piece is um, you're going to need to know what your hourly rate is. Okay. Uh, so if you're wanting to get $40 an hour, you can clean 700 square feet an hour and the home is 2,100 square feet. Well, that's three hours. So you're going to quote $120. There's a lot more to this and there's a lot of folks that can help you create a system like this. Um, and again, it's something that we can talk about on our Facebook group if you want to know more about what we do. The next thing I want to, to leave you with today is you need to over communicate everything. We tend to think everything is as important to others as it is to us, but you need to realize that you may have to say things two or three or four times to make sure they grasp the information. The other piece to this is you need to recognize that people get information differently or they react to information differently. So you need to give them the information in different ways. And what we did in this particular case is we used email tools that had videos in them so that um, we could help our customers and our employees even to understand the kind of things that we were going to do to keep them safe and also be effective in cleaning uh, for the coronavirus. We sent out multiple emails um, and that was a big thing for us to get that information out, get it out quickly so that we could assure people or ensure people that uh, we were going to be safe in their homes. Now, like I said, it doesn't matter if you're talking to customers or employees, it's something that you really need to think about is that you need to over communicate to make sure they grasp what you're trying to say. Now we developed a communication plan and the first thing is you want to have your customer list segmented. And what do I mean by that? Well, in our particular case, we segment our customer list a few different ways. So I can look at a customer and I use tags in our particular software and I can see which customers are biweekly customers versus monthly customers or which customers have used us for one time cleanings. And that way we can communicate a message to them that resonates, that they read and they say, oh, that was intended for me. Next, we use email marketing software. We do not send this from our just normal Gmail account or, or business account because that's a great way to get your account marked as spam. But we use email marketing software. We use a, a software called MailChimp. Um, and MailChimp is actually free for you if you have less than 2,000 contacts in it. So it's a very effective way that you can get started doing email marketing. Now, one really nice thing about using marketing software is you can see who opened the email. So on our critical emails where we were talking about the things that we were going to do to keep people safe and that how, how we were going to clean their homes effectively, we actually went in there and figured out which customers had not opened their, their email. It's very easy to do. You can run a report. Then we used a texting software, but you could do this from your phone if it was a small number. And we actually texted the same link to our videos to them 
to make sure that they got them. It was that important that we felt that they really needed to see this. And that really helped us get a lot of these customers back and being active again in a very quick, um, quick manner. So like I said, we created a plan with multiple touches that had customized messages and we touched them two and three and four times to make sure that they felt safe and that we were actually able to clean their house effectively. And that built trust and reinforced their decision to stay with My Amazing Maid. So let's talk about our takeaways. The first thing is go back and revisit your hiring process and see if you can create systems to help screen and interview prospects without having to be face to face with them. Next, develop a way to onboard and train your new employees online. Whether you use a software like Trainium or you just create something on your own, just using Dropbox or some other way to get that, that out there to them, you need to find a way that you can train your employees before day one so that when they come into the office, they're ready to start work. Next, understand the two big numbers that you need to develop an accurate pricing system so that you can do it online or over the phone. And those two numbers are how many square feet you can clean in an hour and what you would like to charge per hour. And then from there, you can develop a pricing matrix, whether you print that out or you put it in a spreadsheet, but something that you can refer to so that you're given accurate pricing. And then last, start communicating with your customers now because you have to have that trust today so that when you do have an issue like the coronavirus pandemic, that they already have some trust in what you're going to do and what you're going to say. So use multiple methods when you create, when you communicate with your employees and your customers. And this includes video, as well as emails, as well as texting. So like I said, I'll be happy to answer more questions on my Facebook group, The High Tech House Cleaner. I've got some videos posted that go in more into detail on what we're talking about today. And um, just let me know if you have any questions and we'll be happy to help you out. Thanks again for joining us.